Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. No, I'm not going to talk about silver tonight. Uh, there's been some activity, a little bit of rally in gold, but silver's still stuck around 17 bucks. So, not going to talk about it. But we are going to talk about cryptocurrencies because that's where all the action is. Um, again, I think I talked about Cliff High's latest prediction is $13,000 Bitcoin by next February. That's a really aggressive call, but then again, look at the chart here. We're at 2820 on Bitfinex. We're at 2868 on the Chinese exchange, 2830 on Bitstamp, and uh, 2748 in Russia. Um, the correction that we had here, I actually went long in my Poloniex account. Uh, I was in USDT. Got it because I get in it every night, or if Bitcoin starts to falter, and uh, I actually bought in around 20, 2570. I bought in, and so I'm long Bitcoin again in that account. Still trying to get the money out of that account, but uh, let's get over to, to that uh, Poloniex site and talk about some things. First of all, I wanted to talk about Library Coin. So hopefully, you guys. If you accumulated with me foreign coin when I was accumulating it, we accumulated it. I think uh, let's find it on here. I was accumulating foreign coins as bouncing between 300 and 500. Um, that's kind of off this chart, but you can kind of see it back here. Uh, usually, the all um, well, it does kind of show. So all the way back in here, I was getting it from Cripsy. You can see it went all the way down to 200, to actually 100. Um, and then we had that massive move. So it, it actually made, with this uh, big move here, it went, actually went up to 60. So it from the 300, it, it did a, I mean 6,000, it did a 20-fold move. Uh, now I pretty much got rid of all my coins on that move. But uh, library coin, which basically does the same thing, is really starting to perk up. In fact, I just watch coins based on breakouts, and it came on my radar screen. You can see for percentage returns on the day, uh, library coin is up here, so it's 15%. It was a lot higher. In fact, hold on, <laughs> I really like this uh, backing off here. It's backing off quite a bit. Uh, I don't have any right now. I, I took a profit in it, but you know what? Um, I'm going to buy some. I'm going to go ahead and buy a half a Bitcoin of it right now because it's fallen significantly. So I like to buy things that have made new highs. Uh, I've, I'm generally following the rule that uh, it, it, if something has made a new high, then I am going to watch that market more than any other market. So you can see it's getting smacked pretty hard here. Probably the correction point will be down to here. We'll keep an eye on it. Um, so I believe in it fundamentally. It's had a pretty good breakout, and uh, hopefully some of you accumulated it and uh, made a profit on it. Uh, again, I don't want to make recommendations. I'm just kind of telling you what I'm doing, and if you follow me. As Jesse Livermore said, uh, I don't give tips, and the reason why I don't give tips is because if I tell Bob to buy something, then I also t have to tell Bob when to sell it. And that's just not possible with the way these markets are timed. So, you know, if you believe in the coin, you can accumulate a little bit of it. Now, the one I'm playing right now, I actually was trading all day today, and I just couldn't really catch, I just couldn't catch anything. I was in and out of library. I was in and out of steam. Actually, today, actually this morning, I made about a thousand bucks off of steam on uh, uh let's see i think it was this move this breakout right here yeah so i i made money on that one because it was a clear breakout of that old high and again it was all-time high so it broke out and uh, i just did my typical pattern of, of buying no it was right here it was this breakout right there so just buy 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 sell i got back in there and sold a little bit there but uh kind of looks like it's going to make another move here. 
So that's another one to keep an eye on. Now, uh, after not having a lot of success later in the afternoon, like I said, I did okay in the morning. Later in the afternoon, I haven't really had any luck. So I uh, turned around and looked uh, for the ones that are most undervalued. So the one that I'm playing right now is Stratus, and what I'm trying to do is pick a bottom on this. And that's very difficult. So I've been scaling in around 29 and 30, thinking that we might get a bounce off of this. But that's a very risky play. You can see uh, it looks like it's turning down again. So <laughs> be very careful if you're doing that sort of thing. You can see here a lot of volume coming in. Might be a bottom, might not be a bottom. Uh, longer term chart, generally I tend to say things don't go up to go down. That really only a pump and dump goes up to go down. Usually they don't come all the way back. They do come back 50% sometimes, so there could be quite a bit more downside here, but I see decent support right there. We'll see if this turns out to be a good play. Um, now, before I get to the topic of the night, which is going to be Bitcoin and the chart and currencies and how they relate to that, I wanted to, to uh, cover spots because I told many of you a long time ago that I was uh, investing in spots that was one of the coins I have a number of coins that I just kind of accumulated and didn't trade this is when I accumulated on Cripsy before they went under I had to pull all my coins down to a wallet and now um, they're uh, tr it's trading on uh, Cryptopia and Yobit are the two exchanges that it trades on both very thin exchanges but it, it does trade there so this is my first experiment in doing, if you are familiar with reminiscences of a stock operator, Jesse Livermore, in the end of his life, he operated pools for uh, interests, that uh, Wall Street interests who were trying to market stock. And uh, so same thing with a, a cryptocurrency, especially one that's potentially dead, and that can happen, and they can be revived too, that happens as well. But the same sort of scenario, trying to market it. And, of course, the way that Livermore marketed things was through the tape. So I've been creating an active market in this one, we'll say. I, I, have, I think I have about 70% of this coin. So there isn't a big float out there. But you can see here, this is a really great site if you haven't been on it. It's called Crypto Compare. It has a lot of information. Uh, if you click on this trades link, you can see that it, it actually uh, shows both the exchanges the buys and sells and exchanges so when I started operating in this coin it was dead and it was trading between 30 and 50 it's now up to 258 um, wow that would be amazing if this if this coin took off because like I said I have a lot of it in fact I have so much of it that I could probably create a shortage in it I don't recommend I mean if you want to come along for the ride that's fine I don't recommend it because there's quite a good possibility that if the price gets high enough I'll be dumping on you and I don't want that to happen so that spots um, that this one could make me rich if some reason the developer comes back and they issue a new wallet and it goes to a market cap of say 10 million and I have say 70 percent of the coin then yeah I'll be a millionaire but uh, let's get to the main topic here which is the Bitcoin chart and the technical analysis that one does based on parabolic uh, moves and uh, generally I, I tend to trade those uh, it's hard to predict uh, when this one was happening over here it was hard to predict whether that was going to be a, a crash from a parabolic move this one I thought was the crash. I got short in USDT and kind of scaled in. Uh, didn't catch all of the rally from there, but uh, uh, it, it wasn't the it, it wasn't the crash. And the thing is that now I'm starting to wonder if maybe there won't be the crash, and perhaps the corrections will actually get smaller, uh, percentage-wise, or you know just kind of size-wise. So. You can see the long term here. Actually, let's pull out the weekly. Uh, there's no question that that's a parabolic formation. That's that in any stock or investment, that's a frightening chart because uh, 
somebody who buys up at these prices can get utterly destroyed if it returns to these prices. You can see a normal correction would take us back to 1348 and uh, that's cutting it in half. That's a 50% correction. But the thing that came to my mind today is that it's not right to treat this chart pattern like one would treat stock chart patterns. And the reason why is because stocks, uh, when they go into a parabolic move, they are based upon supply and demand of the stock certificates as well as supply and demand of the currency. And so you have to take those two factors into account, the currency they're denominated in and the number of shares that are outstanding. And of course, people look at the profitability of the company, etc. So the rule is always the same. Parabolic moves are followed by crashes. And I, I pointed out before in one video, I, I think I casually mentioned the fact that the only exception I found to the rule of parabolic moves followed by crashes is in regards to currencies and so I'll show you I've shown you this chart before this is a chart of the uh, Argentine peso and this is the long term that's available it's a it's a 10 year chart and you can see that uh, the peso has gone from a price of about I don't know maybe two to a price of about 15 to the dollar so it's lost uh, anywhere from 75 or 80 percent of its value uh, over the course of you know the last 10 years let's say so uh, the Argentine people if they have their wealth denominated in pesos or instruments of debt or instruments of, of stock securities that are denominated in that peso they've lost 75 percent of the value of whatever that is assuming it's flat uh, if it's gone down you have to add to that make it a worse loss and if it's gone up then you it, subtract from it it's, it's mitigated somewhat nevertheless their currency has gone down 75 percent but the thing that's fascinating here is that you can see right here here's a perfect parabolic move here okay and in any normal market that's followed by a crash but you can see here this is not normal Look what it did. It did a parabolic move and then it drifted higher or lower is in value and did another parabolic move and now it's drifting higher. This is not a chart that you see in supply and demand for uh, a stock or a commodity or any physical good or asset that you buy. These, these type of charts don't exist. Here's the chart of the Venezuelan uh, Bolivar. Now this isn't the black market chart, this is the official chart. The black market chart is much, much worse and it looks much more like this Argentine peso. Again, same sort of thing. Parabolic move, expected to be followed by a crash, not followed by a crash. Why? Well the reason is, is because it's a currency and governments virtually never turn around their currencies. It's, it's happened for brief periods of time but generally the rule is that a government that's profligate, that prints its own currency to pay for deficits, debts, cronies, uh, government workers, etc., trade deficits, it, it's going to continue that pattern until it, its currency is either hyperinflated to nothing or it collapses. And that's, that's been almost universal throughout history. Now, the thought that came to mind in regards to Bitcoin is what if Bitcoin is the same thing. In other words, Bitcoin, I've always thought of Bitcoin as a commodity or stock uh, where parabolic moves are going to be followed by crashes and then maybe another parabolic move if, if it's a bull market. But the reality of it is, is that Bitcoin really is a currency. And what this chart is, is a chart of the dollar. This is a chart of the dollar losing value. So really, this Bitcoin chart has a lot more in common with this Venezuelan Bolivar chart, I'm sorry, than this Argentine Peso chart, than it does with any kind of stock or any kind of commodity, whether it's gold, silver, uh, soft commodities, stocks. This is actually a, devalu a chart of the devaluation of the dollar, just like this is a chart of the devaluation of the Peso. 
So it may be that this price on Bitcoin goes up forever in the dollar. In other words, it just keeps going up until the dollar either doesn't exist anymore or has become completely irrelevant. I know that sounds like a radical idea and uh, it's still something that I just can't even imagine happening, but it, it appears to be happening on this chart. And uh, we seem to be setting up for a move higher. Cliff High is saying 13,000 by next February. And nobody thought we'd be at 3,000 right now. So if this is the case, then the people who are saying these sorts of things, uh, Jeff Berwick, uh, Cliff High, there are others, that uh, Bitcoin could go to a million dollars. That's that's effectively the death of the dollar, Bitcoin going to a million dollars. That basically turns the U.S. dollar into the Argentine peso or the Venezuelan bolivar. And it may be that cryptocurrencies actually turn all of the currencies of the governments of the world into worthlessness. And we'll talk to you next time.